the project today is a hydroponics do it yourself hydroponics I've started drawing up the plans and I'll explain all that you know, I've got to be doing some adding on to it but let's get started I'll show you the parts that I've got I've purchased a bulk of all the materials that I'm going to be needing for this build usually I have a tendency to try to use cheap parts and used parts salvage parts and everything but everything on this build is pretty much going to be all new stuff so and I'll explain what I'm doing as I go um, I need to go I, okay I showed you the what I've started as far as the drafting apologize my ass into my shop's a mess but that's just more of the parts but I've started the drafting so I could get the whole spaces because this is going to be a drip type system and I'm going to be using these vinyl fence posts will be my grow tubes and as I go like I say I'll be explaining everything and I'll have a full set of plans available so back in a minute So the first set of holes are marked out on the first four tubes. Now keep in mind that the uh, the, the other four tubes are going to have a different spacing for my little plan, which uh, I'd be happy to share with anybody. The netty basket set I ended up buying are inch or 3.75, so three and a quarter, and Home Depot only sells a three and five eighths hole saw. So there's going to be a little bit of experimenting going on here. The next size they had was four inch, I believe. So let me drill a hole here and hopefully it just, uh, you know, it, it makes it fit tight. So anyway, oh, here's my first test hole. <clears throat> and again, uh, three and five eighths hole saw, uh, three and three quarter eddy basket. Locks in there just perfect so happy with that um, so if you're going to do this be sure to use the three and five eighths hole saw three and three quarter would be too big all right got a lot of holes to drill I'm going to get those I'll mark out the others and we'll carry on. The first sets drilled now I'm ready to mark out my uh, what I have on my detail sheet is my bees which follows that pattern and again, like I say, um, I'll have all these drawings where you can uh, download them or something. I don't know. We'll figure out if you're interested in building these. Um, oh, a quick note. Four inch hole saw. You want to make sure that you have a half inch drill with a support handle on it. Um, if it snags the vinyl just right, it's got a pretty good kick to it. You don't want to, and you want to use two hands to it. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, this is what we got after we got all the holes drilled. See how they're staggered. That will give each plant a little bit more room. Anyway, I got a heck of a mess in here, so I'll take a rasp and uh, clean up the edges of the holes and carry on from there. Thanks for watching again, by the way. So with everything drilled, um, I ended up sticking my nitty baskets in there. Of course, I ended up 20 of them short. I changed my spacing at the last moment and ended up with some more. Um, I just stuck some buckets under there. And if you can see, <clears throat> there's a rake that is pretty close to being an eighth inch to a foot. So these are eight foot tubes. The grow tubes are eight foot long, so it's raked up an inch. Um, in a drip system, this isn't really critical. Um, we're just wanting to deliver the water back to the tank. Um, the flow rate, like in a constant flow system, would be more critical to that, but this is going to be a drip system. So that was one reason that I wanted to do with that. Um, I think it's going to save a lot of energy in the long run. Um, I'll have a formula I'll probably run the water will turn on and off probably four times a day for 10 minutes or something and so I'm not using near the energy I would in the constant flow so these are the standard um, fence post caps <clears throat> there's several styles 
and this is the one that uh, is the cleanest with just a square end. Now this is the uphill end of this so I wanted to I, I wanted to still be able if I have a problem like a big root ball or something that I need to have problems getting cleaned out I wanted to be able to take these off so I didn't uh, use PVC glue I use clear silicone and those will be waterproof with clear silicone um, this right here this is going to be my drip line supply line so there will be one on each tube and I'll get that fastened on there and show you I will glue a PVC um, cap on the end of this and it's again it's schedule 40 PVC Home Depot surprisingly very cheap stuff it's like a dollar seventy something of a uh, stick for a ten foot stick of it so um, I bought some clamps and I'll show you those clamps and how I'm going to put those on there and so let me get one done and I'll show you that and uh, you'll see exactly how I did that. I got three clamps per eight foot tube. Might not be enough, I don't know, we'll find out. Here's all of our caps for glue and I got one oddball. Um, I, the main reason why I wanted to mention, this product, uh, this Christie's Red Hot Blue Glue, it's very, very good stuff. So um, if you end up having to buy some PVC cement, I would highly recommend that and it does not require primer either so all right I'll see if I can't get one of these critters mounted so you can see how we're gonna do that I was gonna mention this um, here's here's my drip line uh, main line it it's not critical where it stops or starts from the end but just to keep everything nice and symmetrical um, my sheetrock square here is two inches wide so I'm just going to put a mark on each one of them just to keep everything nice and clean. Um, and then so what I'm doing is I'm mounting this, as you can see I've rolled the tubes over, and I'm just going to mount this on the far side uh, when it's upright. It'll just be off the far side, then our drip lines will come off of that. Okay, right. everything's marked up, and here is the clips that I'm using. and. Uh, it's a 7 8 it's a 7 8 uh, electrical conduit clip. <clears throat> it's half inch PVC pipe, but for those that don't know, pipe's measured by the inside diameter. So the outside diameter is um, on schedule 40 PVC, it just happens to be 7 8 of an inch. Um, actually, this might be one inch, and of course electrical conduit's measured from the outside, so it's kind of wacky that way. So it's a little loose, as you can see, but that's okay. Now the other thing that I could do is once I get this on here, I'll come back over with a, a pair of like water pump pliers or channel locks, and I can compress this a little bit, you know, if I want to make that tighter. So I thought I'd just mention that. And then, <clears throat> so this is a cold galvanized uh, piece of metal that, you know, rust inhibitor, and then the screws that I'll be using are stainless steel sheet metal screws. I'll show you one of those here in a sec. Here's that screw I was talking about. It's just a pan head sheet metal screw. No magic there. And uh, of course if you don't forget, unless you have one, don't forget to get a, a screwdriver, a drill driver for your Phillips, for your drill. <clears throat> 